Imagine waking up as a Giganotosaurus. You're 43 feet long, weigh as much as a school bus with jaws that can bite through a car. But your arms are so tiny, you can't even scratch your own face. That's right, one of history's most terrifying predators was living a daily nightmare. If you think your life is hard, try being a 14-ton carnivore in the scorching Patagonian desert where you need to eat about 20 kilograms of meat every single day to survive. So what was it actually like being born as a Giganotosaurus? Well, your life of suffering starts before you even take your first breath. Maybe in a simple nest made of dirt and plants in the middle of the Corcoran Desert around 100 million years ago. This isn't some cozy dinosaur daycare. The Candeleros formation in Patagonia was basically prehistoric hell. A harsh, arid wasteland with extreme temperatures and unpredictable water sources. Not exactly the five-star accommodations you'd want for your first few days on Earth. While your egg incubates for months, you're basically sitting in a prehistoric buffet advertised to every hungry creature around. Egg-stealing predators like small alvarezorids or the snake Nisea rugongria would love nothing more than a quick Giganotosaurus omelet. Talk about a rough start. You could literally get eaten before you're even born. When you finally crack through your shell, you're not exactly the terrifying monster you'll grow up to be. Nope, you're tiny, vulnerable, and basically a walking happy meal for everything else. There was this medium-sized predator called Eryxinetosaurus that lived in the exact same environment. And to them, baby Giganotosaurus was just a delicious snack with legs. Human babies cry when they're hungry. A baby Giganotosaurus cries and becomes something's dinner. And the mortality rate for young dinosaurs was ridiculously high. Most never made it past their first year. It's like playing a video game on extreme difficulty with one life and no save points. As a baby Giga, you're immediately faced with a terrible choice. Stay near the nest where predators know where to find you or venture out with your pathetically underdeveloped muscles to find food and water. And remember, you're in a desert where water comes from ephemeral river systems, which is science talk for sometimes there's water, sometimes you're just out of luck. If you do survive your first few months, congratulations. Your reward is constant hunger. You're a carnivore from day one, but you're too small to hunt anything substantial. So you're probably chasing around tiny creatures like the small mammal that lived in the same environment, if you can catch them. Human toddlers throw tantrums when they drop their ice cream. A baby Giganosaurus starves to death if they can't master hunting skills fast enough. Not exactly what I'd call a fair comparison. Oh, did I mention the weather yet? So while you're trying not to become someone's lunch, you're also trying not to die of heat stroke or dehydration. Yeah, it was rough, but somehow some baby Giganosaurus did survive. Perhaps they had some parental protection, although we don't have concrete evidence for parental care in Giganotosaurus. Maybe they formed small groups for safety, or maybe they were just the lucky ones who found enough food and water while staying hidden from bigger predators. If you make it through this nightmare baby phase, then you enter the even more challenging phase of rapid growth. Growing at a faster rate than a human teenager during puberty, your body demands more and more food every day. And that's when the real problem begins because now you need to start hunting bigger prey. So you survive being a baby Giganotosaurus. Congrats. Unfortunately, your reward is entering dinosaur puberty. And trust me, it makes human teenage years look like a vacation at Disneyland. Based on evidence from close relatives like Maraxis Gigas, Giganotosaurus didn't just grow big. It grew big for a long time. We're talking decades, possibly 35 to 40 years to reach full size. Imagine having your awkward growth spurt last for half your life. That's pu-brutal. During this time, your body is basically an all-consuming meat furnace. Scientists think Giganotosaurus had what's called an intermediate metabolism. Not cold-blooded like a modern reptile, but not fully warm-blooded like us either. But you weren't quite as efficient as using that energy as a mammal. Translation, you are always hungry. A teenage Giganotosaurus might need to eat hundreds of pounds of meat every week just to keep growing. That's like a human teenager needing to eat 50 pizzas every day and you thought your grocery bill was high. But here's the problem. You're still not at full adult strength or size, so hunting gets complicated. Your growing body is constantly changing, throwing off your balance and coordination. One day your legs get longer, the next your head feels too big for your neck. It's like trying to learn to drive a car while someone's constantly changing the pedals and steering wheels. Meanwhile, your teeth are constantly falling out and being replaced. 
That sounds bad until you realize it's actually helpful. Your knife-like teeth were designed for slashing, not crushing bone like T-Rex, so they broke easily during hunts. A growing Giganotosaurus could replace hundreds or even thousands of teeth throughout its lifetime. Imagine if human teenagers lost a tooth every time they bit into something too hard. Let's talk about those ridiculous arms again. As you grow bigger, your body proportions shift, but one thing remains constant, those hilariously useless forelimbs. They're so small that scientists believe they couldn't even reach your mouth. So if you got something stuck in your teeth after a meal, you just have to live with it forever. No wonder dinosaurs were always so angry. The worst part? You have to learn to hunt creatures that could easily kill you with one wrong move. Remember those giant sauropods from the Candelaros formation? Like Andosaurus or Limaiosaurus? Even a juvenile sauropod could weigh several tons and had defensive weapons like powerful tails that could break your bones with one swipe. Your hunting strategy was probably what scientists call a slash and bleed technique. With those serrated knife-like teeth, you'd attack, bite, and tear out chunks of flesh causing massive blood loss. This method isn't quick, it's not an instant kill. Your prey could fight back, run away, or even fatally injure you while bleeding out. And let's not forget, you're doing all of this in the harsh Patagonian Kokorum Desert. Imagine trying to hunt massive prey while also dealing with extreme heat and potential dehydration. It's like trying to run a marathon in Death Valley while wearing a fur coat. Not exactly ideal conditions. Evidence from related dinosaurs like Mapusaurus shows these growing pains were very real. These weren't just minor scrapes. The pain must have been excruciating, especially with no dinosaur hospitals or pain medication around. If you were lucky enough to be part of a group, which some scientists think might have happened based on evidence from relatives like Mapusaurus, you might have had some help learning to hunt. But group dynamics bring their own problems. Competition for food, fighting for dominance, and risking injury from your own kind. The scariest part? This awkward, dangerous adolescent phase could last for decades. While modern humans might suffer through five to seven years of teenage awkwardness, Giganotosaurus might have spent 30 plus years in this difficult growth phase before reaching full size and strength. And what was waiting at the end of all this growth? The full responsibilities of adult life. By the time you reach your maximum size of around 43 feet long and potentially up to 14 tons, you'd have survived countless injuries, near starvation events, and dangerous encounters. Congratulations, you're now a fully grown Giganotosaurus. After surviving decades of growth, you've finally reached your maximum size. You're a 43 foot long killing machine with a massive head full of serrated teeth. You should be living your best life as an apex predator, right? Wrong! Being an adult Giganotosaurus is like being stuck in an endless all you can eat contest where if you lose, you die. Scientists estimate that an 8 ton Giganotosaurus would need approximately 20 kilograms, which is 44 pounds, of meat every single day just to survive. That's like you having to eat 160 quarter pound hamburgers daily just to not starve to death. Hope you're hungry. And where are you getting all this food? You're living in the Candelaros formation. Your main prey options were sauropods like Andesaurus and Lamiasaurus. Think about that, your grocery store only sells one thing and it weighs several tons and can kill you while you're shopping. Speaking of the climate, let's talk about the heat problem. Candelaro's formation was really hot and when you're a 14 ton animal with an intermediate metabolism, keeping cool is a massive challenge. Scientists believe large dinosaurs had specialized blood vessels in their heads, particularly around the nostrils, mouth and eyes to help them cool down. But this system wasn't perfect. When you're hunting in the scorching Patagonian heat, you're basically running a fever while wearing a giant lizard suit. Modern elephants spray themselves with water to cool down. You, you'd have to find one of those rare ephemeral water sources in a semi-arid environment, which is not exactly convenient when you're in the middle of chasing down dinner. And again, let's not forget those infamously useless arms. As a full-grown Giganotosaurus, your forelimbs are proportionally tiny compared to your massive body. They couldn't help you grab prey, break your fall if you tripped, or even scratch an itch on your face. Or your butt. Imagine not being able to scratch your butt. Everything depended on your massive head and powerful legs. And speaking of falling, at your size, a simple trip could be fatal. Imagine weighing as much as a school bus and falling over with no way to break your fall. The impact could shatter bones, cause internal injuries, or leave you unable to get back up, making you easy prey for scavengers or simply leading to a slow death by starvation. 
gravity is not your friend when you're a giant bipedal carnivore. As we previously talked about, evidence from close relatives like Maposaurus show these giants lived hard lives. Paleontologists have found healed fractures, signs of infections, and evidence of chronic injuries in their bones. These weren't just occasional bumps and bruises. They were serious, life-threatening conditions that these animals somehow survived while still needing to hunt dangerous prey every single day. And the hunting wasn't optional. It was hunt or starve. With your massive energy needs, going even a few days without a successful kill could start to weaken you. Unlike some modern predators that can go weeks between meals, your intermediate metabolism meant you needed regular feeding. Social life wasn't much better. If Giganosaurus did live in groups, as some scientists suggest based on evidence from relatives like the Mapusaurus, you'd have to deal with fighting for dominance, sharing kills, and potentially dangerous interactions with your own kind. Fossil evidence of other large theropods show bite marks on faces and skulls, which are signs of vicious fights within their own species. What's more, you lived in a world where water sources were unpredictable. The braided river systems and ephemeral water sources in your environment meant that water could literally appear and disappear within the seasons. Droughts could concentrate both you and your prey around dwindling water sources, which is convenient for hunting, but also creating intense competition and conflict. Every single day as an adult Giganotosaurus was basically an episode of a survival show, except you didn't get to go home after filming, which brings us to the last years of your life. Remember when getting older meant retirement, golf, and early bird specials? Well, for Giganotosaurus, getting older meant something completely different. A slow, painful march towards inevitable doom. Based on studies of related dinosaurs, like Maraxis gigas, a Giganotosaurus might live for 30 to 50 years. That's actually pretty impressive given all the dangers we've talked about. But for those later years, they're pure nightmare fuel. The first problem, your body literally starts falling apart. Fossil evidence from large theropods show arthritis, healed fractures that never set quite right, chronic infections, and teeth that don't replace as efficiently. Paleontologists studying Sue the T-Rex found evidence of arthritis, gout, and multiple infections that would have caused constant pain. Imagine being in constant agony and needing to chase down multi-ton prey just to survive. There were no retirement homes for elderly dinosaurs, no social security checks, and no prehistoric soup kitchens. You either kept hunting or you starved. Simple as that. But hunting gets way harder when you're old. Your reactions slowed down, your muscles weakened, and those injuries from your youth, they come back to haunt you, like that one high school football injury your uncle never stops talking about. The teeth that once sliced through sauropod hide like butter, they're worn down or don't replace as quickly. Your once terrifying roar becomes more of a prehistoric wheeze. They're not exactly respectful of their elders. Evidence from other theropods suggests fierce competition within this species. An aging Giganotosaurus would likely be challenged by younger, stronger individuals for territory and food. And that slash and bleed hunting strategy we talked about earlier, it might get used against you. But the most brutal part, most aging predators don't die peacefully in their sleep. They die from starvation after they can't hunt effectively anymore, or they're killed by rivals or other predators when they're too weak to defend themselves, or they suffer a catastrophic injury during a desperate hunting attempt. Like, remember all those healed injuries paleontologists found in dinosaur bones? Well, those are just the ones they found of the dinosaurs that survived. The fatal injuries don't get a chance to heal. And the older you get, the more likely your next injury will be your last. Even if you somehow avoided all these problems, the environment itself was waiting to finish you off. Droughts, floods, extreme temperatures, all especially dangerous for an aging, weakened predator already struggling to find enough food. Growing old sucks for humans, but at least we don't have to hunt our dinner until the very end. After a lifetime of being the most terrifying predator in prehistoric Patagonia, a Giganotosaurus would likely end its days hungry, in pain and alone, proving that even being at the top of the food chain doesn't guarantee a happy ending. If you like this video, please comment down below what dinosaur you'd like us to cover next and give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And if you want to watch another video just like this one, click the video on screen now.